Got a handle, user's manual, and a battery. Hey guys, today we're gonna to take a look at this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from AO Lithium. This battery is somewhat unique in that it is serviceable. The manufacturer advertises the ability to disassemble the battery and replace the cells and the BMS. So we'll go through the usual procedure. We'll take a look at the external characteristics. We'll do a capacity test and then we'll do a disassembly to see how it's built inside. So looking at the front here, it's just the typical specifications. Lithium iron phosphate, 12 volts, 100 amp hours. Uh, some warnings and disclaimers. This does have Bluetooth built in. There's an app for it. And I see there's a QR code over here for access to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Additionally, this battery is advertised as uh, meeting the UL safety standard. I do see the uh, RU logo down here, which typically means a UL listed component. Looking at the top here, we can see where the main positive and negative lugs are. So these are some pretty nice M8 bolts. We have a split lock washer, a flat washer, and, uh, and there's plenty of room on the length of that bolt to get at least one uh, good lug under there. Other than that, there's not much more to see on the outside here. We just have a standard nylon strap and a few QR codes over here, which I believe are serial numbers. Uh, the user's manual is laid out quite nicely. There are no apparent spelling mistakes or anything like that, which is something I've been looking for recently. Looking at the rightmost column here for the 100 amp hour with Bluetooth. So it weighs in at 23 pounds. There's the dimensions if you need them. And uh, we have a 200 amp max continuous discharge current. We have a 500 amp max peak discharge current for less than 10 seconds. And a max continuous charge current of 100 amps. And then our charge and discharge temperatures are fairly typical here. One downside is this battery only supports up to two of these in series for 24 volts, so you cannot make a 48 volt battery bank out of them. Um, I imagine that limitation is probably from the BMS itself. Uh, and then this battery comes with a five year warranty. And uh, I really do like these terminals. They're very beefy. Um, there's a lot of surface area and the bolts tighten down nicely. They're not the cheaper style that I've seen on some of the other batteries I've tested. Uh, for charging this battery, I have my Ames 12 volt charger. I believe this was 70 amps or so. Since this battery can take up to 100 amps, I have this set on max power. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And uh, we're charging at just under 80 amps there. So we'll leave this run until it shuts off. All right, so here's my standard test setup. You should all be familiar with at this point. We have a Batrium shunt, an HRC fuse for safety, a 12 volt inverter, and an Android tablet that's showing us voltage, amperage, wattage, discharged amp hours, and discharged watt hours. Uh, now while this battery was charging, I did find and download the app for my phone here. It's actually a pretty nice app. You can see it's 100% charged. The current voltage is 13.75 volts. Uh, and we can see it has never been cycled. And so the other two tabs we have here are parameters. So we can see how the BMS is configured. Overcharge is 3.65. Uh, over discharge is 2.50. Both of those are completely normal specifications. Um, and then looking at the history tab, we can kind of see here where the battery reached full state of charge. Um, so we have the maximum cell, the average cell, and the minimum cell. So as you can see, they are not perfectly balanced yet. Typically, it will take a few cycles for the battery to work out, uh, top balancing the cells perfectly. So I have four incandescent light bulbs connected to this inverter, which should give us right around a 0.2 C load. We'll leave this run until we reach low voltage disconnect and the BMS and the battery hopefully shuts down and we'll see what our measured capacity is. And our capacity test concluded at 100.73 amp hours. So we're good there. And uh, once the BMS shut off, I did lose the statistics here on the real time page of the app. However, if I go into the history tab, so we can see here a graph of the min, max, and average voltage. You can see it shut off just before 2.5 volts on the minimum cell. Now I did note that it only logs this data while the app is running. So, uh, so you do need to keep the app running. It doesn't have to be open. It can be in the background of your phone, but the app has to be running and within range of the BMS for it to log this data. It will be interesting to see what kind of BMS we have inside this battery. Um, based on this app, the type of data I see being reported here and just how it works overall, I'm going to guess it's likely some variant of the JBD BMS. All right, so I see on this battery there are Phillips screws in the four corners. All I should have to do is remove those screws. I'm hoping there is no glue or anything else to cut or pry apart this battery here. All 
All right, so with all four screws out, that actually opened pretty easily. So, looks like the lid wants to tip towards the front. Oh, wow. Look at that BMS heat sink in there. I am fairly sure that's a JBD, like I said before. That is the classic uh, JBD Bluetooth module we have in here. And there's some adhesive tape on the bottom. They just have it stuck to the top. And look at those bus bars. Typically we see like 10 or 8 gauge uh, cabling in here, but but man, those are thick and it's the multiple layers of copper, exactly like I just used in my Eve build. The only difference is it's a different type of heat shrink, but the layers look the same, the thickness is the same, the whole size looks the same. I'm sure these are the same bus bars with just different heat shrink on them. Alright, so on the four corners inside here we have four Allen screws holding the battery assembly in. Something else I just noticed too is that the temperature sensor from the BMS is correctly placed on the actual bus bar for the cell. Alright, so with the BMS leads disconnected, the negative bus bar disconnected, and there were four screws, one in each corner of the BMS. Should be able to pull out the BMS. There we go. Man, that is a massive heat sink on this thing. It's incredible. I really like these JBD BMSs, and that was a great choice for this battery. And now that I've removed the BMS, I see there is a fifth screw holding down the plate for these batteries. So, yep. I don't know if that's aluminum or steel. Yep, that's steel. So we can see how the cells are in here. They are laying down on their sides and they are covered with a piece of epoxy board, which is fairly common. So that was fairly easy. There's no glue holding them in. Uh, so there are two cells on each side here as you can see and then there's a piece in the middle here that actually holds these two packs together and with those two screws removed you can separate the two batteries here so taking a look at the battery pack design again there are two cells here we can see a piece of epoxy board separator between the two cells and then it's wrapped in two locations several times with a piece of this uh, reinforced fiber tape. I always forget what this stuff is called, but it's that uh, but it's that very strong tape with fibers in it that does not stretch or tear easily. Now the manufacturer does state that these are Calb cells and all four cells have their original QR code. You can see I peeled back this one as well. QR codes are intact. All of the vent covers are in place. I don't see any damage there. I don't see any indication of any leakage or residue in the vents, which is great as well. There is no bloating on the cells anywhere. They are perfectly flat on all four sides. And these are aluminum tabs they have on the cells. They are laser welded into place. So as far as uh, serviceability goes, you would not be able to replace an individual cell. You would have to replace these packs of two. And then you'd likely have to find your own way of connecting them back together because most of us, are, none of us really are going to have a laser welder to weld the new tabs on. So. Uh, unless the manufacturer is actually going to sell replacement components. Alright, so these bars that are on the batteries are 2.18 millimeters in thickness. And these flexible bus bars they use to interconnect them are 2.46 millimeters in thickness. And uh, looking at craftsmanship type things, all of the balance leads are connected to ring terminals. There is heat shrink applied to them and they are screwed into the bus bars. There's this very thick piece of foam that's covering the tops of both batteries for insulative purposes. Uh, so where the main negative connects to the terminal on the lid here, uh, you can see where they bent over the flexible bus bar at a 9 degree angle. And uh, it's super cool how you can see all of the individual layers of copper in here. And then you can see the layer of nickel on the top and the bottom. Alright, so let's just take a quick peek at the BMS here. I removed all of the screws holding this plate on. And wow, look at the size of those bars that come in. So one of these will be the B- minus that connects to the battery, and the other will be the C-, minus, which is the charge and discharge port. And we can see here a number of resistors, I'm guessing those are, uh, responsible for metering the current going in and out. This is probably one of the best BMSs I've seen in one of these batteries thus far. I've got the battery most of the way put back together now. I'm using an iCharger X6, charging at approximately 5 amps, and I just want to check that the low temperature protection works, so I have the uh, temperature sensor here, and I'm just going to stick it in a glass of ice water like usual. Oops. And there we go, output connection broken, 
so the low temperature protection does work. All right, so that's about it for today's battery review. This battery tested out great in terms of capacity and the safety features, and it's built extraordinarily well, clearly designed and built uh, to handle the 200 amp continuous discharge that it's rated for. Now, I did check with the manufacturer on a couple of things, one of which is uh, whether or not they sell spare parts, considering this is designed to be disassembled. And they pretty much stated that as of now, they do not carry spare parts, and they do not recommend end users disassemble this battery. Um, any repairs or disassembly should be done by a professional, and obviously that's to keep safety in mind because uh, if you stick tools or something in the wrong place, you could uh, cause a short circuit, which could be rather catastrophic. You don't want to have fire or you know things like that happening. The second is whether or not this supports 4 in series for a 48 volt nominal configuration because most JBD BMSs we've seen on the market and in use do support uh, up to 48 volts at least. And uh, they let me know that the limitation of two of these batteries in series or 28 volts nominal is based on the uh, chips in the BMS that were used and it sounds like that was a trade-off for having a higher capacity BMS that was capable of the full 200 amps. So that is kind of a downside in my opinion it would have been nice to have this uh, 48 volt capable. However, I do like that they included a JBD BMS and didn't uh, cut corners and go for something cheaper just to get the 48 volt nominal configuration. Uh, also, I did notice that uh, since this is a JBD BMS with a standard Bluetooth module, you can connect to it from pretty much any app which connects to JBD BMSs, uh, including this one that we're most familiar with here. And you can go into the configuration and change settings from within this app. So obviously I do recommend using the app the company provides and not trying to change settings of your BMS, which could cause damage to the BMS or the battery and uh, you don't want to. So technically, yes, you can change settings, but no, I definitely would not advise doing so. So lastly, to touch on price of this battery, as of the time of this video, it's listed for $5.99 on Amazon and $6.29 on the company's website. And that does come out to around $500 per kilowatt hour, uh, which is a little bit higher compared to some of the other options on the market. However, the build quality of this battery exceeds some of those cheaper options on the market. Additionally, this one is capable of 200 amps, where many of those are capable from anywhere to 50 to 100 amps. Uh, so it is a trade-off depending on what your specific needs are and whether or not you need a battery with the higher current potential. But yeah, other than that, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below as usual. Hit that like button before you go, and thank you very much for watching.